Hey everyone, I'm Joe and today I'm going to be doing a book review of The Void Trilogy by Peter F. Hamilton. The Void Trilogy is comprised of The Dreaming Void, The Temple Void, and lastly The Evolutionary Void. This is a science fiction grand space opera trilogy. It is set in the Commonwealth Universe. It is the second series that Hamilton has wrote set in the Commonwealth. The first series was the Commonwealth Saga, which I've also done a review of. This is the second, and there is a third trilogy that he's writing, but he hasn't currently finished it. Although once he has, I will read it, because I am a big fan of Hamilton, and I love this Commonwealth Universe. It's a really interesting one. So, first of all, I'll do the world setting, and then the plot. The year is 3580, so it's really a long way in the future, and Humanity has reached a point where we have started to spread to the stars really badly. We have colonised hundreds if not thousands of worlds across multiple solar systems and inhabit quite a large portion of the galaxy and there is even one planet that is an extremely long way away on the absolute edge of our galaxy. I'm not actually sure from memory if it is actually on the very edge of another galaxy but it's a really long way away, although that's just one planet. This colonisation of the stars is due to a wormhole technology. Basically think of the Stargate system from Stargate SG-1 and you're pretty much there. Humanity has reached a technological level where we're pretty much optimal level of technology and it's been integrated into our society and way of life really heavily and we can't really do without it anymore. And it's actually so advanced that we've almost plateaued as far as technology is concerned. I mean, we've uh, researched and developed every single significant technology we could ever want. We have phenomenally advanced uh, medical technology, which makes us virtually immortal and ageless. We have, obviously, the wormhole technology. We have starships, which can go beyond our own galaxy. And indeed, there are reasons for doing that and all sorts of other quite simply phenomenal technology to a really extreme level. Due to this plateau however, the humanity has reached a point where we've not inventing anything else now, there's nothing for us to sort of strive towards in that sense. Now it is about society and also about personal development and personal evolution and indeed obviously that is the name of the third book, The Evolutionary Void. Humanity has started to divide along different paths. There is one called the Advancer Path where uh, humans are uh, interfaced with technology to a really extreme level and after you've been interfaced and made more than human to sort of like a, not, not cyborg but like super advanced where you've got advanced shielding, you've got all sorts of things built into your own body. The path of the Advancers is to essentially one day not need all this advanced technology and indeed not need physical bodies. It is about personal transcendence to a near godlike pure energy format that can just go off and exist in a essentially another sort of dimension and not be human anymore, frankly. The other path is what is called the higher um, faction, and that is basically where you download your mind and your entire consciousness, everything that makes up you, into a something called ANA, which is a quantum subspace computer which is built into the um, space around Earth itself. Which sounds weird but it actually makes a fair bit of sense in the book. And once your mind is part of ANA and this giant sort of computer, your mind becomes part of its intelligence and it, and it becomes a sort of a sentient AI. But you can you're still you and you can still do your own things within it. Think of the Matrix basically but without being plugged in. You are in this world in a completely virtual sense and you can still interface with the physical world as well. So that's it as far as the world and the setting goes. Now actually on to the plot. In the centre of our galaxy and indeed in the centre of every galaxy, scientists believe that there is what is called a supermassive black hole. In the Void Trilogy, Hamilton does something very clever and the supermassive black hole in our solar system, well, 
in our galaxy is actually not a supermassive black hole, it's actually the Void, hence the name of the trilogy. The Void is, for all intents and purposes, very much like a black hole. If you go into it, you just disappear and you're not heard of again. Nobody knows if you are dead in some other world, you're in some other dimension. Nobody, frankly, knows and you can't really get into it because of reasons I'm not going into, but it's a really interesting idea and one that I think is done really, really well and is very important to the plot. One faction called the Living Dream Movement want to get inside the void because of one man's dreams. A guy called Inigo has dreamed of a person called Eddard who is on the only world that we are aware of within the void itself. Eddard has lived this sort of idyllic life, this sort of perfect life, and people are fascinated by these dreams and his life because it really is the ideal life that people want. He stands for justice and the kind of right way of doing things. It is all very moral and very just. And this Living Dream movement wants to get inside the void, but people fear that if they are able to, this will trigger the void into a massive um, what's called a development phase where it will basically get much much bigger and basically wipe out all life in our galaxy which is obviously an extremely bad thing if you happen to live in the galaxy. I'm not going to say too much more of the plot because I'll give away spoilers without really being able to avoid it because the plot is very complex and it intertwines all over the place but it's really interesting, really complex and really worth it in the end. There are two distinct stories within the trilogy there is the Commonwealth story outside of the Void, then there is the Eddard, the Water Walker um, story within the Void, and indeed the chapters are actually split between them. You will have a Eddard chapter, just a single chapter, then you will have several Commonwealth chapters, then you'll have another Eddard, then more Commonwealth, and then that continues throughout all three books, although it changes a bit towards the end of the third book, of course, because it starts to combine and wrap up and this is quite interesting things I think. The world is really really well thought out and really blends in with the characters. The characters I can't really go into too, too much detail about because frankly there are a large cast of them. They're all working at cross purposes. They're all interlinked in various ways and throughout the course of the books they have all sorts of weird and wonderful interactions. Most of them are developed fairly well. Some of them are obviously only very light. Some of them are not done as well as what you'd hope for but that's only a minor thing, frankly, because the overall trilogy and indeed the overall character development is very, very good. Hamilton covers a lot of ground and an awful lot of ideas in the book. Obviously, the most significant idea, of course, is the way that humanity will evolve into the future and what it will become once you reach a level where that technology is kind of plateaued, as I've said, and there's nothing else for us to achieve other than to make ourselves better and greater than what we are today. I love the way he tries to explore these ideas and he explores them in multiple different ways and obviously due to the factions and the different cross purposes of all the different characters he's able to explore them in quite peculiar ways in some ways and they they can all intersect each other and cross over and become more than some other parts and indeed that's a lot of what makes this book. The parts are often quite small but all of them make something much, much greater than themselves. And frankly, I love this trilogy. I really do. So overall, this is a grand space opera. And it's grand in every sense of the word. It has a large cast of characters all working at cross purposes. A large and complex plot. The world and indeed the galaxy is obviously large and complicated. And the ideas and the concept that Hamilton is covering in the book is also very expansive and very curious and really does make you think at least I really think so and I love this trilogy and I actually think this trilogy is one that is well worth it if you can cope with the number of characters and the complexity of it because it is quite tricky to follow if you're not used to this kind of book. So with that said that's it for my review. If you've read these books or indeed any of the other Commonwealth books by Hamilton then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion. If you've got any suggestions for books you think I might like, then please leave a comment as well, because I'm always interested in new authors and new books to read, as always. All my social media links can be found in the description box below. And that is it. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.